There you are. I see you. I see you, Sheena. Okay, I'm approving your request. Yay! Woo! You don't want to see my, my uh, <laughs> awesome office as I'm like trying to, this just shows how awful I am at this stuff. Hi. <laughs> how are you? It's so good to see your face. Oh my God, I know. We were just talking about how we felt like caged animals half the time. Yes. So it's really refreshing to be able to see people and catch up because it's been a couple years. So mm -hmm. it's so crazy. Yes, it's been some years. I'm going to try and get Tiffany on here. Give me just a second, okay? Okay, no worries. Okay, I just, Tiff, I just send you a request. I think, I think this is going to happen. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> oh my <God. laughs> it never rains in El Paso and then now it's like pouring. Oh my God. Oh. Hi, Shana. Hey, how are you? How are you? Look at that. We did it with minimal fuss, you guys. I'm so proud of us. Yeah, I was, I felt very special, honestly. <laughs> I'm like, she was like, oh, it should be really simple. And I'm like, yeah, that's, it should be. But <laughs> typically with us, it normally is not. What is going on over there? It oh. is raining. It's like raining cats oh. and dogs, dude. Like, I had to put the, look, I'm going to flip around so you guys can see. Of course it is. We got onto Instagram easy. And of course, there's going to be some issue. Oh, my word. It never yeah. rains in El Paso, and now it's pouring. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. Well, it, it didn't snow like we had. We had snow on Mother's Day, so that's <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, no. Now, where are you coming from? Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, yeah, you get snow. We don't know what that yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it's like a sloshy snow. It melted pretty quickly, but the fact that we even had it was pretty sad. It's like, can you just like not have that like in the middle of May? Like, <laughs> yeah, I still feel on that. Yeah, people are stoked to finally meet you. Although it is you know, via Instagram Live, but either way, I'm so happy that we got her on. Good job, Eliza! Yay, we finally did it. I'm so tech challenged. Like Tiffany has had to oh, walk no, me through a God. lot of things. <laughs> but um, let me introduce Sheena real quick. So I met Sheena on the set of XOR. She came over with um, Lincoln Electric, and she set us up with our consumables. So we get to talking and stuff, and she tells me um, that she is product manager, right, of the yes. consumables. And I was like, <laughs> what does it take to become a product manager of the consumables department? And she tells me then that she's a chemist. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I, I just wanted to know more about her. I was completely starstruck. And it was, um, it was amazing to hear her journey through school and through Lincoln itself and, um, and how she's a welder and how she knows like the absolute like atomic process of how the welds happen. <laughs> I can't wait. Like, and so, um, I mean, while I know how the welds need to go and how they need to work, I don't know how they chemically respond to each other. And she does. And that just like blew my mind. And well, so, I will, I will I say. I actually got some, I did homework. <laughs> oh my god yeah so first of all i don't know everything let's just throw that out first yeah. so she made me sound like a rocket scientist i am not that at all um okay. but you are but i am part of the design process i help support the folks that know how to design it and know what type of um elements really make a really solid well depending on where you're putting it and uh it is really cool and exciting when you get a part of that because then you, you, you design something and then you get the welders, you know, under the hood and they give you feedback and you're like, in theory, this is supposed to be okay. Right. The welders are like, no, it runs like crap. So back to the drawing board. So. You welders, you know, under the hood and they give you We're getting feedback a little bit, right? Oh, oh, are you guys getting feedback? A little bit. That's okay. How can, oh, who's going, you know, this is going to be interesting with us both, both doing this. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to shoot a question real quick. Go ahead. How did you even get here? Like, did you just wake <laughs> up one day and you're like, you know, I'm going to develop some welding consumables because that's what I always dreamed of. Like, who does this? You know, like, wh where's yeah. your story begin? Um, so 
Well, I was telling Eliza this, we were talking for a little bit. And uh, so I, you know, going for chemistry, I mean, you typically, regardless of your female or male, you usually start as a lab rat, right? So um, that's not for me. Um, you could obviously tell I'm not afraid of my own shadow. I like talking to people. So um, I don't, uh, I, I'd want to stab myself in the eye with a fork if that was my livelihood. But everyone's different, right? We need yeah. people that are willing and able to do that. So I, I started with that. And actually in Cleveland, we have a lot of coatings companies, I'm sure, and coatings as in like paint. So I'm sure you've heard of PPG and Sherwin sure. and all of that. And so I actually worked for a smaller outfit that basically was a subsidiary of those. And so I uh, kind of worked always in manufacturing. I guess I'll preface that. Um, I think that when you're in the Midwest, you're, you're always going to be in a manufacturing outfit. So I've always been around majority guys also going for engineering. That's just goes with the territory. Um, but yeah, I actually was working at a waste management company prior to Lincoln. And we actually... Uh, manage Lincoln's uh, account uh, for their waste, you know, it's properly wasted for the environment. And um, there's an opportunity as an environmental engineer for Lincoln. And so actually, that was my first job at Lincoln was uh, an environmental engineer uh, doing environmental health and safety stuff for their facilities. And I think the most exciting part of that, because it sounds really boring, was no, that good. I was... <laughs> That I was a part of um, the credits for tier four final engine driven welders, which is actually kind of an exciting thing that people can understand because we think about our cars and how we had to upgrade those and the welder engines, same thing. So being a part of that and learning the regulations behind that was really interesting. Um, so uh, learning how you know how we're going to design around that to fit the regulation, I think you guys probably know as well as I. Sometimes those regulations or lawmakers don't really know what they're asking, and it's a tall order. <laughs> so we had the right people on the on the case, and uh, obviously we were successful, and the rest is history. So we're not uh, polluting the air as much. Um, but then I worked in automation uh, for a number of years, so the robotic cells. And I was telling this to Eliza earlier. You know, I'd go to these different outfits who were you know different companies that wanted to put a robotic cell in their facility. And a lot of welders were like, get the heck out of here. You're, this, this thing's going to take my job. Right. And really, the value of it is, is that it's a more efficient way to do some of these really mundane welds, let's say, or welds that are a little rep repetitious. It puts less wear and tear on the folks that are in there. Um, but then it also gives them an, an empowerment moment to know how to, you know, use the robotic kind of program. Um, also, the ro robot can't determine if it's a shitty weld or not, right? right? So so that's where the trained eye and someone who, let's say that robot's down, I mean, you have to know how so people know how to weld. So all of those things, right? So um, it is it is a really cool thing. And I think just... You know, knowledge is power. Just pe people understanding where, what does a robot mean? It's not taking your job away. It's actually giving you an elevated job to not have to work as hard, but it's going to be able to have a different, using a different muscle, you know, where it's, you're, you have that trained eye. You don't necessarily have to be under the hood, but you can look at that weld and know if it's crap or not. So, um, and then I fell into product management just because I've been working with customers and uh, some of the folks in our corporate office just you know we started talking and um i actually always been wanting to learn how to weld but all the roles that i had i had not had an opportunity to so as a product manager i felt it's important to know how to weld the stuff you're selling so, <laughs> so it's it's it, you know it's good so I and mean, we have a lot of really great um people all over our company and um, I just, I learned from really the best people who've either been welding for 40 plus years to the people that I have kids in my neighborhood. So they're yelling, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and it's not raining here. It's like actually warm here today. This is Cleveland weather for you. But don't worry, you're going to hear my dog barking pretty soon here. So we're just going to have like a little like harmony. <laughs> the, right? the kids and the dog, we're going to be awesome. Yeah. Yes. Or my, my fur, my fur child, uh, she's my French oh. bulldog. Oh, yes. she's gorgeous. She's in a coma, so <laughs> she can hear her snoring, little old lady. Um, but yeah, so I just, so that's, I've been with Lincoln for, you know, almost 12 years. So it's been um, a journey, you know, and it's also been interesting to see, I've this to Eliza as well, that um, 
there's people that were trained welders and um, they have so many different types of jobs within our company alone. And I know that's probably the case, you know, in a lot of industries and companies where they might be doing maintenance repair on our operations. They may be literally instructors. They may be someone who's inspecting the welds to make sure they're passable for certain applications for customers. So it just depends, you know, you really can do a lot of different things with that, that, uh, that knowledge and that trade. So I'm, I'm so like, glad that you said that because I'm so enamored I mean, right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So, well, this uh, is very enlightening uh, after a Friday of torture at work, right? Cause you just get beat up all day and someone's excited to see you besides your dog. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that is yeah. great. So, um, I guess, um, when we were, when we were talking, you were, you were talking about like, the whole like um, going to chemist, going through school and then like having the support of your family and also like going into like the environmental stuff and your first job and how that kind of like prepped you for like the safety and the PPE and, and all that stuff. Walk us through that process because I thought that was totally interesting of how you know like what chemically what all that stuff does to you health wise. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Hear this. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I think that uh, the more you learn about it, um, so I was telling her that, you know, as I was navigating through some of my roles, um, one, the automation one was a big one because, you know, part of it was also fume extraction for semi-auto kind of applications. So it wasn't always robotic cells. So it was folks that needed an arm to extract it from their breathing zone. Um, and unfortunately, I think a lot of it's like sometimes, you know, the way someone's trained, it's not really that they are a bad welder, they may have awesome welds, right? So, but they were trained and they never got out of those bad habits of letting the, you know, plume go into their their breathing zone and breathe in all of that loveliness. And that's all metals, right? It's all, uh, you know, turned into these little particulates that you're breathing in and like it goes into your lungs and obviously it's not good for you. So it's those type of things where it's like, it's so important to, um, you know, be mindful of that. But I think it was helpful for me to have my background, of course, from, it, it's so interesting. We were talking about this too, like how you don't even plan like what you think you're going to do with your life. Like, right. I, I mean, I honestly thought like, oh, I'll be a chemical engineer, you know, maybe I'll do pharmacy, you know, and then, you know, maybe that'll be something I'll end up doing. Maybe I go to law school. I don't know. I thought about a couple different things before I really, I love working for Lincoln, actually, to be honest with you. It sounds like I'm doing an advertisement for them, but um <laughs> Honestly, I mean, they're, they're the longest company I've ever worked for. Um, you know, I'm approaching 40 uh, in a couple years, in two years, actually. I'm 38, so if anyone's curious. Um, <laughs> um, and it's been great because I think, like, there is such opportunity to, to work uh, with all different areas. And um, welding is very interesting. There's never, it's never the same. And I'm sure you guys probably attest to that. There's always something you can learn. Right. Um, and it, that's what makes it interesting and exciting. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, my, my journey of environmental compliance and falling into like fume control and knowing why that's important, because I knew what's, you know, what the composition of that fume was, um, because part of what we would do would do fume generation rates on on people. And so we'd be like, oh, wow, like this little filter is all cunked up. And it's like, that's what be, could be in your lungs. Like, that's why you need a hood here, you know, to pull it away. Right. Um, but then, like, I think working with the different uh, design part of the consumables is also interesting because, you know, okay, given performance, more or less, so maybe not on the health side, but giving you the best quality products um, is also optimizing what chemical is really going to make it easier and user friendly for a welder. So they don't have to work as hard to make it look good. If you've shitty product, I mean, it tells, you know, I I always say when we're, we're uh, talking to people who are buying these million dollar cells or buying any type of big equipment, our stuff is not cheap. We're like the Nordstrom level of uh, our brand. I'm sure you guys can attest to that. Um, but it's like, it's your, you have a luxury car, a luxury truck. Are you going to put shitty tires? That's a consumable, right? It's the oils, the tires, it's all those things. That's what makes it important. Why it's good to be mindful of what consumable you're buying. So that's how I look at it anyway. So now hold on. Mm-hmm. Is there any hope in the future for a lower fume rod, filler metal, uh, welding wire? Like, I don't know. Is that a thing? I mean, you're developing them. Can we put <laughs> Lincoln, hear us out, okay? 
Yeah, so there there is, um, so we actually have welders that have waveforms. I'm sure you guys have seen this. And depending on the waveform and the gas mixture that you use, um, you actually can reduce your fumes a lot, especially with MIG, I'll say, but it's really cool. And even flux core for that matter. So, so if you're able to use that co that combination, it's we got all those data behind it. Um, it's interesting to see that where you've added a certain type of gas and um, you have a certain, uh, you know, a waveform, of course, is controlling the heat input while you're welding. So that all helps keep it controlled and it also controls the level of fumes. So it's actually a really good thing. So those, those are the things that we've solved for, <laughs> for, for health. So tell me, walk me through like one, a day in, in your life at, at work. I mean, especially like now that you just said like how you guys have like, you know, gotten it down to like heat transfer and the, the waveform and, you know, bringing the plume down and stuff. How does, how does your day begin? Um, so, I mean, as a product manager, you know, we cover, we touch so many areas of the business. So um, it's, it is kind of cool. I mean, I like the fact that I have a technical background, but at the same time, it's like, even if I didn't, it's understanding everyone's strengths in that as all these different stakeholders. So I deal with R&D engineers. Um, I, I, I work with a lot of the welders um, as we're vetting out our products. Um, our production folks too, like the value they bring and the quality that they are, you know, work towards all the time and keeping our, having, you know, the pride of working on, with Lincoln and keeping our legacy alive kind of thing. We're very, you know, we get really excited about those things. So um, I think my day in day stuff is, um, you know, I'm constantly now that we've been working remotely, which hasn't been as exciting. And I was telling Eliza, even though as product managers, we didn't have to go in. Um, a lot of us were like, we have a reason to go in uh, because we want to like, you know, be around people and see what's going on in production and uh, you know, get a pulse for it. And so, you know, having those conversations is really huge. So I go in at least once or twice a week and uh, I'm able to have those conversations with people that, you know, getting a beat of what's happening, uh, getting the feedback from customers. Um, so I was just, as I was telling Eliza, I was just in Atlanta uh, talking to some customers and it was great because you don't truly know what maybe opportunity space we have until you get the voice of the customer. Like we don't pretend to know everything excuse me, for every application, for every, you know, thing. Um, so it's being humble, even though you could say, oh, we've been around for 120, that's actually 126 years, wow. uh, Lincoln. Yeah. So a long time, uh, right? Constantly innovating and adding new uh, solutions to welding. Um, but it's constantly understanding what the customer wants and cares about what the, what the welder needs to feel confident and good about what they're doing, you know? So, you know, when people don't understand welding, I always think a car is the most relatable, as I said a moment ago, is like, do you want good tires, good engine, good gas, you know, engine oil, gas, all those things are important, you know, for you to have a longevity of your vehicle. And that's part of, um, you know, having a quality experience when you're welding too. So, um, so my day and day, it depends on the day, I guess is a, a short answer. I kind of went off on a tangent there, but it depends. Sometimes I'm in the office, sometimes I, and I'm dealing with, uh, you know, not such great things like we all do. Um, but you know, it's, it's actually a lot of learning experiences, right? So those help us get stronger and try to do some preventative to not have that happen again. So some of that's just, you know, growing pains, new people, right? So we yeah. all were new. We were all green at some point. We were talking about that too, Eliza. Like yes. um, not everyone is a seasoned 40 year plus vet in what they do, right? We all were the person sweeping the floors at some point, right? Yeah. And so it's, I think. <laughs> it, was me. it was definitely me. So yeah, we all have been there. So it's yes. like, let's be, be respectful and we all deserve like encouragement, support. And I personally have experienced that. And I'm sure you ladies have too. Um, so it's not just about, and we were talking about this too, where it's all about having the support you have females and males, usually males when it comes to this industry. So okay. yeah. Now, I didn't hear this part, but did you actually have to go through the welding school um, to work with this department, or did you have the opportunity to do so? 
Um, so the, so there, the, uh, I, I got the opportunity to, which has been awesome. Um, that was awesome. And actually I took a couple more classes after that because I was a little rusty and, uh, you know, you get away from things. It's like that muscle memory sometimes is yeah. still there. Um, I will say we just did a little, uh, like did some welding earlier this week uh, at this training thing that I was doing up in Atlanta. And uh, I basically refreshed my memory, how crappy of a stick welder I am. <laughs> <So> <laughs> that's like, I am not good at stick. So kudos for those who are pros. Um, I'm not pro, but I'm pretty good. Yeah, it's, it is, it is, it is an art. I mean, that was the, I mean, TIG is definitely part. an art. But, yeah. It's a good job. Yeah, it. I mean, it's it is definitely a skill that not everyone has. It's yeah. like I'm trying to. I mean, I remember. It's like here I was. I remember being under the hood. And I'm like trying to like strike the arc. Like it's 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 like a it's like a match, right? And then I kept on sticking to the electrode to the plate, and I'm just like, Sheena, you you're not. This is not your day. Like just <laughs> let someone else weld. Like. No, 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 no. Don't be so hard on yourself because I actually just did it the other day and I do it all the time and I you just kind of just have to laugh at yourself we're human we have to give ourselves a little bit of grace you know what I mean like yes. it is called thick welding so just laugh at yourself and move forward <laughs> I yes love that you brought that up because we were talking about oh it's okay It'll... hold on hold on had a, had a delay yeah there was a little oh. bit of a weird cycle situation <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I was just saying, like, you know, we had, we were talking about um, how, as women, we feel like we're never enough. And so we overcompensate in other ways, either by doing, like, way too much more than what the job is asked for, or we're, like, you know, trying to hard to people please, or, or we're, like, going out of our way to be more approachable and less abrasive in the way that we do things. How have you been able to manage that throughout your career? I mean, even even in school, I would figure it started as far back as then as you not having that given space to learn and to do what you do. Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, so I would say, and we, we were talking about this and it, and when sometimes you talk, you have to, you have to think it, throw it out there. I think it's, um, having a voice, letting yourself have a voice. And like you, like you were saying to uh, forgiving yourself and realize you're not going to always, you know, not everything's going to be perfect. I mean, I think we are so harsh on ourselves really as humans, but females, especially, we often don't think we're going to meet, make the mark. And we're constantly thinking of all the different uh, reasons why we're not going to meet the mark. And so um, I would say having the support also of encouragement and a lot of my mentors, as well as you, Eliza, you were saying, I mean, they're men, right? So having good mentors and having um, people that are in your corner who are going to support you and make you feel confident um, uh, is, is important um, and also challenging you, right? So I, out of your comfort zone. So I feel like uh, I had a lot of uncomfortable, it was very uncomfortable for me, of course, um, because I'm like a people pleaser by nature. And I also am come off too nice, I think sometimes, you know, um, and so sometimes when you're smiley, and you're, you know, they kind of people dismiss you as being, you know, a nitwit, we'll just right. say, and <laughs> like, and that you don't have much to contribute to the conversation. But once you actually, you know, have a moment and have the, the have the floor, and you can speak, you know, and actually have a conversation and say, look, I'm contributing something. This is my perspective. Um, I think, you know, you can really get somewhere. Um, I think, so I think just, it takes time, I guess is the best way to first like do like sort of like a number, like breaking it all down is having um, just put, giving yourself time and, and grace as you were, you put it, but um, also having the support. Um, and, you know, I was telling Eliza, this is that, you know, I, you know, you get frustrated because you silently suffer, right? You don't, you think if I work my tail off, everyone's going to know I'm working my tail off. Right. Um, but actually it's like, no one's a mind reader. And I guess this goes back to what all the men say is like, I'm not a mind reader. Use your voice. Like, let me know what's frustrating you. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I think that, you know, he always encouraged me. He's like, well, tell him what you want. Like, tell him like how you're feeling or ask the question. Like, how hard is it for them to just answer that? It gives you peace of mind. And uh, so that, that's that been a journey, right? So 
if I would have been more confident, like some of these younger uh, gentlemen and ladies out there now in their early, you know, 20s who are starting their career, I mean, you know, probably, be, you know, running stuff, but I didn't. So it took time to get where I'm at and I still am growing. We're always growing and we're constantly learning and uh, getting better. So, you know what? I think that's real. Regardless of age, it's really just nice to see a woman in your position knowing that okay, this is valid. I can actually do this now. That's what we need is to have more people in these positions and to make it normal again, you know, not even again, just normal period, because there are not people out there who are actually doing these jobs. So it's nice to see women in these positions. So there's someone to be relatable to, you know what I mean? That's yeah. what conversation. So there's going to be a sister out there who's going to see this and she's going to be like, I love science. This is what I want to do. And she's going to have a little bit more confidence and hopefully you know, reach out to us if you have any questions. That's why we do this. So for you to say that is really right on point with what we stand for. Yeah, no, I, I think that that is huge. It made me think of Eliza, you and I were talking about historically and, you know, like World War Two when all of the, um, I was telling her about this one uh, guy who retired somewhat recently from Lincoln and he has all daughters. He's very much advocate for women. Uh, women can do anything a man can kind of thing. And sometimes you don't know if that is what people feel, but you hope they all feel that way. Um, and he was saying, you know, in World War II, I mean, all these women are taking on these, in quotes, men jobs, right? And uh, and I think that, you know, we then got out of the war and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, well, women don't really belong here, go back, you know, kind of thing. So I think that it's, you know, I think you get to a point where you're, you're just like, you know, maybe we need to revisit that time and realize that it was proven that we could do it, right? That we could be um, uh, part of that uh, kind of those type of jobs. We could be welders, manufacturers, uh, lead uh, designs, you know, all those different things that don't really fit the stereotype um, that we have to be in quotes, pink collar, as they used to say in the 80s, I guess, a pink collar role. Uh, for females that are somewhat, you know, I guess, technical to be nurses and, and teachers, and, and there's nothing wrong with doing those jobs. But um, we also have the ability to be engineers like myself, or you could be a welder, you could yeah. be anything. So yeah, I love that. Um, just because uh, I mean, that kind of just puts it all into perspective, that, you know, World War Two wasn't that long ago. And um you know, we, we shouldn't we shouldn't have to be revisiting those kind of conversations, but you do. And, and I think it's something that women take for granted. I know that I took for granted for a very long time and just thinking that everybody would be receptive to me coming into, you know, the automotive position or the welding positions. And it's just not the case. You have to make your space. You have to at least be assertive enough in yourself that you know what you're doing, that you, you belong there. And that you're going to take your space and not apologize for being there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But I, I also, I, it's, it's so funny. And we were talking about this too, is this delicate balance of not wanting to like be too aggressive or be too like in your face because some people will just be like, you know, it's so it's, it's a whole thing. And we constantly are going through our head, like, I can't be too of this and too much of that. At least I am. Maybe I'm the crazy one, but you know, you're not like I'm constantly over that side. <laughs> yeah. I'm at an age where I just don't care anymore. You know, take up all yeah. the ladies, be as aggressive or whatever the heck you need, because you know what? Our male counterparts, and I'm not discounting any men because I love you guys. Um, but why not? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they are raised that way. Why not? You know, because yeah. he tells us to, why not? Yeah. And so uh, I mean, I was I was telling Sheena when we were talking earlier that you and I just having a phone conversation totally changed my perspective on a lot of things, and that is kind ah. of why we decided to start these these talks because you know the more people you talk to, the different mindsets and different perspectives that they have. And I was telling Sheena that you know at one point I was getting paid thirty thousand dollars less than my counterpart, and that was really crappy. And you told me, what did you do about it? Did you ask? you know, for the money? Did you say like, hey, like, you know, I'm worth more than what you're paying me. And, you know, to to now, like, I'm disgusted with myself that I didn't do it, that I never spoke up for myself. And so um, I really think that that's why 
the syndicate is important for us so that we can have these conversations with all these different ladies and men, you know, to get different perspective and diversity. It just makes you more rounded person. I know Sheena was talking about that, that that's kind of helped her with, you know, figuring out a lot of things when it comes to um, either technical stuff or working with clients and working within Lincoln about having like those critical conversations. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I have grown so much as a professional and as a human uh, in, I have a very diverse uh, friends, you know, they're, they're, like, they're all different backgrounds. And when I say diverse, I mean, you know, maybe not everyone uh, is a carbon copy of me, which makes it really beautiful because you really have that fresh perspective um, and you then can grow that empathy and perspective when you're having those critical conversations, as you were saying, Eliza, and, uh, and, you know, like asking the questions, like you guys were saying, like, I think that that's huge. And I think we're so afraid of asking a question to seem like we're wasting time. Um, and, um, you know, we're like, oh, we're sorry, you know, we're so apologetic of every time we, we ask a question and there's no harm in asking the question. In fact, it makes it look like you care, you know, instead of it being like, I'm okay. As you were saying, Liza, you were that you accepted being paid less, right? Until you said something, you know, that that's kind of where it is in my better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just it, it, it's, it's just a lesson, right? We all, we all have done something like that. So but yeah. that's the thing, unless somebody is actually telling you, like, did you, did you ask for it? Or, you know, unless you know to ask that question, I don't know about you guys, but I was raised to be seen and not heard, you know? So I came from a very, very conventional, traditional family. We took care of the men. So that type of question was like, whoa, but I have a different <laughs> personality and I'm like, I want to know right now what you're making. <laughs> you know, I'm out of here. <laughs> so I just, <laughs> yes, I'm yeah. Here. But no, no, you have to know your worth. And until you have these conversations with people, men and women, you don't necessarily know, oh, that's a question. I mean, we learned a lot about that when we were talking to Athena, you know, like start negotiating yes. for ourselves. Know our value, you know? Men, mm -hmm. they're like, heck yeah, give me that raise and I need 401k and I need, you know, give me a little medical, you know, whatever the heck you want. And we're like, um, we're just so happy to get in the door. Now yes. it's, that's the situation. I mean, we're just as talented, if not more, and you have to definitely negotiate for your life, period. It's, yeah, I, I you know, I, I, I kind of am chuckling inside because I, now as I've gotten older, um, I'm noticing a, there's a lot of guys that um, are too, um, they're not as, as assertive as you are, uh, right? So they are also just, they're in quotes that some people call them the desk engineers or they're just, you know, I mean, and they, they need support from us too. You know what I mean? And I've actually found myself in a position where I'm just like, you know what? Like this person's a rock star, but he doesn't, he's not outgoing, right? He's not selling himself. So it goes to, to that whole, like, let's, um, you know, you know, looks like basically a, praise everyone. If you feel like there's someone who really needs the, the spotlight and support yeah. them, I mean, take the moment. And you obviously have, like you said, you're not afraid of saying something. And we need people like you to be an advocate. I'm more outgoing than I ever was, let's say, when I first hit the industry. Um, and I think I've made that as an opportunity to, you know, especially in this weird climate we're hopefully getting out of uh, the pandemic. Um, you know, it was challenging for a lot of jobs. And, uh, you know, I think we all try to make efforts to make sure that, all these different roles and responsibilities kept on full time as much as possible. And, uh, you know, we were able to do that uh, a lot at, at headquarters, which was awesome. We didn't have to let anyone go or anything. And so that was really, that's really important. Yeah. <laughs> because it, it was hard and it is hard. It continues to be. Um, and so again, it's that advocacy, right? With us being empathy, empathetic, and also just giving each other support, men and women, because I, I've noticed a, a shift change, and you may have seen it too. Um, the younger generation, um, there's a lot more uh, men that are taking a back seat, and they're not having a voice. And as Eliza and I were talking about before, we need that fresh perspective from both men and women and people of different, you know, backgrounds and stuff. And so that's what makes really amazing 
like uh, things happen, you know, because you get a really enriched, well-rounded concept and solution. I mean, you can really do well. Um, and I think that's why companies like Lincoln have have been able to survive and weather the storms because they do have, you know, the diversity. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Love that. Definitely okay. love that. So that brings me to, like, we were talking about you being a mentor and, um, you know, passing off the, the knowledge that you've got. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, so early on in 2020, I mean, I, again, I think we all just are like, when do we become a mentor? Am I going to be 60? I don't know. Like, when is that going to happen? But I think like I started talking to one of a, a kid that I went to college with, I say kid and we're like, oh no, we're grown ass people. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, he was doing this mentor thing and, uh, basically it's called college now. And I think they have them all throughout the country and it's an opportunity for folks that come from very challenging backgrounds. They accept the College Now scholarship, and then they have to have a mentor assigned to them to help them stay strong. And um, I think that it's it's a good um, thing to help them kind of keep uh, focused. And there's also other mentoring programs that I've been looking into that also kind of help advocate for the trades. I know Lincoln does a lot of that, too. Um, so it's also advocating. We do that locally. Uh, I just was thinking about that um, as I was thinking about the mentor stuff. And we talked about what I just assigned into. Um, but there's also some other opportunities like locally that Lincoln has put their you know money where their mouth is kind of thing and have brought people into uh, high school students. And there's a whole program that we do where it gets them to like figure out like if college isn't really the, their thing, like is there something that really might give them that sense of accomplishment. And that's really, you know, what success is. I think we were telling you, you know, we we're talking about this, Eliza. It's success is really, you know, having the sense of accomplishment and feeling fulfilled of what you do. Um, and that doesn't mean that you make a bazillion dollars. Does that sound amazing? Sure. Um, but in the end of the day, we know plenty of miserable people that make billions of dollars. Um, it's about having a comfortable living. I'm not saying you should live on a, in a box in the corner, but um, <laughs> just like, like that. Yeah. I mean, if that's your thing, we could do the bohemian thing in the tent in the middle of nowhere. And it's totally fine. Um, that's your style. But for, for, I mean, so there are things out there that's really exciting, I guess, is the best way to summarize it. You know, I just recently, you know, started that to help folks, um, you know, have a mentor uh, who want to go to college and go that route. But I think that it's amazing that uh, there's a lot of organizations like Lincoln uh, that are trying to promote the trades because there is a huge need. And we talked about this, too. Um, and I think I, I didn't talk to you about this, Eliza, before, but it made me think about it. And I didn't get to bring it up with you. But, you know, with all this pandemic, so many people got so much work done in their houses, right? And I know I did. Um, and it made me and I know we've all experienced this, you have a contractor or someone coming in, and how hard it was to get people to call you back, or just that business sense. I say, if you can have the ability to communicate well, and be a masterful, let's say you're a plumber, and you know how to do the plumbing thing and solder and all those other things whatever your trade is, like you can make bank, like, and be your own boss. If you don't want to work for the man, we'll say. <laughs> so, um, cause there, some of them, it just, it was just a matter of not calling you back. We're like, does this person not want work? Well, they were just that busy, you know, right now. So, um, I thought of that. I'm like, yeah, that's a, that's going to be more of a growing problem beyond, you know, the, um, you know, beyond the pandemic, I think we're going to need more and more folks filling those shoes. Um, we're not going to have enough people to do those jobs. So. No, hold well, on. you were saying on. that we're an average of within what, how many feet of a weld? What was that? You were telling me that we're, that we're always within a certain amount of feet within a, like a weld. Yeah. A weld somewhere. They say, it, yeah. Like seven feet. Yeah, six. Yeah, you're at least, you're at least. So it could be closer, at least six feet from a weld. So it could be something that's on your desk. You know, yep. the weld in your desk, right. or it could be on a chair, which is under. You know, it could be your obviously your car is the obvious thing, right? But there's stuff in your house. There's 
all of these things. Um, so I thought like when you start learning about welding and you start, and we were talking about this where when you also learn how to weld and what a weld's supposed to look like and you start making your way through the universe and you say, wow, that's a shitty weld. Like, how is that keeping that together? You know, like there was a, uh, it's interesting because you can recognize it. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I, we were, if anyone's from, I mean, you, you're from the Texas area, but it was like, there's this place and we were, we saw these cast iron uh, fire pits and I saw we were approaching this huge, it's called Bucky's. And it's this huge like gas station bonanza that ever it's like a behold state, you know? And, and so we were approaching the one entrance and I remember us going there, I was telling her, and you saw these horrible welds on these cast iron, um, you know, uh, fire pits. And I'm just like someone who's the layman, I'm not a, you know, I don't weld every day, but I saw that was not, you know, that's going to fall apart. You put that in your truck bed, that thing's going to fall apart. You have to <laughs> weld the leg back, you know? So it's those type of things where, you know, you also grow an appreciation. If you learn how to weld, you see the good and the, and the bad. So. Hold on. Quick question real quick. Can we go back to that college now program? If oh, yeah. looking to get into a mentorship like that, could you walk us through the process of joining it or to where yeah. we look for more information yeah so the college now um so there's the one that i'm in it's it's for the cleveland area but i know they have them all over so i think if you look up college now um it might come up in a google search um and it's uh basically you 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 know you'll apply for it and then they interview you through you know kind of understand give you a background check so they obviously don't want someone who's you know as a CD background or whatever to like right. keep mentoring someone in the bad, like black market biz or whatever it would be, I guess. Um, which I don't think anyone would do that uh, if they were applying for it, but yeah. And then you um, go through some little training and then you get assigned a mentor or a mentee and, uh, and uh, you're only committed to reach out to them, uh, I guess at least two, two or three times a month, which really is a huge commitment, but um it's, I think it's those, and then they, I think we're doing some icebreaker things, you know, in the summer going into the, the, the fall uh, semester. But um, yeah, I just, I think it's a great opportunity if someone wants to go that route and they come from sort of a, a background where it may not have been an option for them, like, you know, and giving them that support where their family and friends really don't know any better and they don't really understand why it's important to them because they have like a dream to go to school for that. That goes along with, um, I think, even the trade mentoring stuff, right, um, and those programs. I think having those programs are important because not every family understands, like, a passion that someone might have. It might be very different than the rest of them. Right. So um, I was telling Eliza this, you know, my family, they thought, oh, you're good at math. You know, maybe you should go into accounting or finance and work for the Fed like your dad. Well, I don't like, I would want to, I don't, numbers are great, but I like science. I like uh you know, get it, get it, getting into uh, sort of the physical science part of it, making the math make sense, you know, and, and more, you know, I think that's part of engineering, I guess, too. But it's one of those things that you have to figure out what you want, you know, and it's helpful, like we said earlier on, to have support and having programs and making people feel like welcomed and keep them going with what they have passion for. So. Love that. Thank you. Yeah. Let me post this up once we're done here. I see a lot of people laughing. I think that's funny. <laughs> oh, I, see ours. I don't even have the op I'm, I'm even... sure that it's delayed reaction to um, when we were talking about seeing the, the crappy welds because we've, we've all seen the crappy welds. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's it's like, you know, once, once you, once you know how to weld and you see that that's not a, a good weld, you see them and you're like, Oh my God, they're, they're out there. They're real. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You scroll up to one of the comments from California Welding Institute. There's a comment about um, a certain wire. You know, I want to get into the wires. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. I'm all, yes. Let's bust out the rods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tiffany really wants to get technical with them. Some of the consumables. Ask all those questions. Yeah. Okay, I'm hoping that I can answer them. Yeah. Here it is. It's, uh, 
Oh, oh, oh it one. says, um, need to develop an easier way to weld with an NR232 inner shield wire. Yeah, that's, uh, that, I mean, so the, the, those are the type of consumables that are difficult because of it being inner shield instead of having a gas. So um, it makes it more challenging. It's already kind of a messier process. So yeah. you're, you're not wrong. Um, and, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it gets, um, you know, I'm not part of that design. Oh, is that your puppy? <laughs> no, that's, that's mine. That's hers. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, so it's, yeah, so the nature of that consumable, that wire is, uh, is messy to begin with. Um, it's supposed to make it, it's one of the, I hate to say sort of that rough and tough type of applications where you can be out in the field and you don't need to have a gas, right? right. Um, so a lot of those tend to be, you know, a little, uh, you know, more spattery, a little more, um, you know, because you're outside usually when you're using those. But um, that is a good recommendation uh, just to see something that's a little less pain in the ass to weld with because th they are not easy. Um, I actually had an, another a question that someone asked me similarly if there would be a self-shielded flux core stainless wire that um, because those don't really exist really and uh, and uh, I was like, um, well, I haven't heard enough demand for it, but um, it's a thing that we might look into. I don't really know. It might also be kind of messy, but it's one of those things where some structural stuff out there is going to stainless because it has integrity, mechanical properties, and then they don't have to constantly repair the welds because, as you know, it it rusts or oxidizes over time, or they try to repair the paint on these bridges and everything else. Whereas if it's stainless in some of these joints and stuff, you don't really have to do as much maintenance and repair. So there's a lot of those coming up. So it's kind of exciting. That is so neat. So how do you, um, is it like by demand and like how you start to develop new product or start to like, you know, test out product with different types of, you know, shieldings and stuff that you start to develop things? How does that start off? So sometimes it's literally feedback that our stuff may not weld as fantastic as someone else's. And we, I mean, we have a lot of really amazing legacy products that people have tried to, you know, uh, kind of break out and back design, you know, and, 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 you know, put a, an equivalent out there. Um, but naturally there are other people in the market that have really rock star you know, products that we have not maybe measured up to. So getting, you know, some of those, uh, getting the feedback from the customer is the biggest thing. So if we're trying to get into an account or we're trying to penetrate a market that we think that it's something that's going to grow based on market research or whatever, um, a lot of it's feedback from our sales too, um, but it's also feedback from just in general conversation. So we have customers, you know, calling in all the time asking us questions we have our competitors actually calling in oh, wow. uh which is really funny because they try to be sly our applications engineers tell us this all the time they'll call in to lincoln because we have a lot of technical support we actually have people that know welding super well and um it's uh it's 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 difficult sometimes because you're like you don't really want to help them but they might also be like do working with two to it might be someone who's a cu customer who has competitive wire and our wire right so or our machine and someone else's machine so we have to have that knowledge of kind of why it might be easier or not so easy compared to to for different things so um but yeah so really it's getting voice of customer it's getting that feedback um, sometimes it's like we go into certain uh, industries and recognize where there's a pain point too. So, you know, that's part of the whole voice of customer for people that may or may not know that process. There's an actual official process for that. And it basically involves like understanding a customer's pain point and how you can maybe alleviate or make it less painful for them. And some of that is having a quality product having a, a better welder, um, also identifying, you know, those solutions, what they can work on. So, um, so yeah, there, there's all those things. And then we have to figure out what, how we can serve them and do that. So sometimes we have part of the puzzle and some, of, and, and we just need to develop another part of it. And sometimes it's literally starting at ground zero and realizing that, you know, we need to get 
you know, a, a dog in the race, so to speak. Um, so, and that's what's exciting is that we're always evolving and changing and, and improving and uh, um, welding, I think has a lot more opportunity to grow because we have so much technology with the inverter type stuff, for example, that's huge uh, with uh, power saving stuff. I mean, that's, that's really cool stuff, honestly, um, because that's stuff that I don't think everyone thought could happen in our welder because people are so used to sort of the antiquated welder, right. just how all the stuff that goes that you could do to improve the power usage, but then the heat input and really making your welds that much more proficient. It's really cool. Okay, so I have a question from my students. What is, <laughs> you already know it's coming, what is the best machine for the beginner welder that can... <laughs> A sixty ten rod. Oh, ah, good. I'm a stumper. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to know. Um, I guess my little bit of experience, which isn't much, I would say. If we're going to talk about the machines, um, I'll just own that. Um, I think those multi-process machines that are coming out on the commercial side, especially if you're just doing um, more DIY stuff, you're just learning, and you don't have like, you know, $40,000 for, I don't know, some of these insane right. involved machines. Um, so those power MIG, uh, there's also multi-process things. I think they call them, there's like a, oh gosh, I'm going to mess up the names because there's literally been like a new one every like two quarters. And I'm like, I can't keep up with them. You guys are just, they do a little slight tweak. We have a lot of multi-process machines. So I'll just say, if you look at that on our website, those are really cool because they often have a lot of stuff that makes it easier for you to weld a 6010 and lower 7018. Like those are ones that are really those bread and butter stick electrodes as you, as you know. Um, and uh, you know, th I, I would, I would, I recommend those, I guess everyone in the past probably would have said the, what do they call those? The, Oh, the, um, they look like a, they're like an old school, like little radio oh, looking guy. Great. Looking. Yeah, I mean, my brain, I, I, I seriously couldn't think of words earlier. I was talking to Liza. I'm like, I swear I didn't take any medication before I talked to you. But I'm just like, I could, my like, my words aren't quite like punchy. Oh, as like, yeah. So. Hey, it's been a long week and you're talking to us on a Friday <laughs> evening. So we totally forgiven because I oh, mean, Tip and I, like we rush home. We kind of clean up and then we get on the phone with each other and we discuss like what we're, how the interview is going to go. And then I call you and then, and then I totally mess things up. That was totally on me, guys. I, I talked to you oh for too God. long. <laughs> it's totally <laughs> fine. But you're good, dude. Now, can we <laughs> do the 7018 electrode rod, please? I have to know this question. Why do we have to bake it and the science behind it? And <laughs> don't bake it. Right. This is a three part question. When we don't bake it, it's not necessarily the worst, but is there really expiration to these rods? I need to know. It's like my favorite rod and I've done it both ways. So I, I just need to hear it from I need to hear it from you. <laughs> um, so 718 is not alone in that. Right. There's a lot of rods that uh, really shine with that. And it has everything to do with moisture pickup. Right. So they. um and then that makes sense, right? It's like, I always actually, when people are learning for the first time or they want to understand what, what an electrode is, I always say it's like the uh, rock candy, uh, you know, kind of stick thing. Um, and you know, how it all works out and why it's called deposition, uh, instead of like the composition, you know, type of stuff or the weld and stuff and what the chemistry, why that's important. But to your point, it's not just 7018, it's the um, the composition of moisture pick. I mean, of course, you don't want porosity, you don't right. want worm tracking, any of those type of things. So it's basically to avoid that. And in fact, we kind of recommend that for uh, even flux core wires uh, as well, um, and especially where that's used, which is usually shipyards, which is by water typically, of course. So it's susceptible to, especially in the bayou where it's super moist and um, humid. And uh, we've had a couple of those come up where they're like, oh, we opened it up and we left it on the machine. And the next day it was, you know, running like crap. And I'm like, right, you're in like Louisiana <laughs> in <laughs> July. <laughs> like uh -huh. you can put that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's hard. So, and I, it goes along with the, the stick electrodes too. So it's not, 
it's not just the 718, it's all of the ones. And, and essentially what keeps that all together is like, is like a paper mechanism, basically. It's just a little like to keep the binder and all that is all kind of, you know, kind of keeps it together and hardens and it cures, but it, it still can have that moisture pick up. And it's, it's also part of like where it ha- it makes up that, you know, shielded gas to protect the contaminants of your weld, right? So as you strike that arc and it starts going, there's this shield of gas that's created from that, as I said, the rock candy. <laughs> like, um, so it's just funny um, when I try to explain that to, we have kids come through Lincoln to like get, you know, a touch of, of science. And uh, those are some of the things that we kind of share with them. So I, I didn't mean to sound like I was talking to a kindergartner, but it's sometimes just I like part it. of my life. Because I'm going to refer my students because they ask, you know, why, why, why? And I'm like, well, there is a science behind it. And what about the rebaking? You know, because I know um, if we don't necessarily run through a, um, a full rod, I will like I will use it because they don't they can't necessarily use it. They're just learning. And it's easier for me. I could just, you know, use anything. But what's the science about um, behind reading them? Yeah, I think it it's the same uh, about you know kind of getting the additional moisture that may got picked up in the environment. But then it's also some of the residuals that um, might have been on like your your tip or whatever um, from your last run. Mm-hmm. So there's some of that too. Um, but yeah, those those are big things. I I, I think some people forget and. And I get it. Sometimes they're also just like rushing through jobs, you know, especially if you're out in the field um, or even, you know, wh- whatever it is that you're working on. And sometimes people forget that that's important to bake uh, off those additional things. So it's just not a it's not a variable in the equation. Right, Eliza? <laughs> we were talking about I kept on saying not a variable in the equation. I kept on going with this uh, scientific uh, or mathematical reference. It's like how I talk, unfortunately. No, it's um, but- <laughs> I'm such a dork, but, um, but yeah, so, um, yeah, that's, so that's, that's the main reason is, is that, so hopefully that answered it. I don't know. It's not kind of oh, seems like you're fine. Um, so what about the expiration on a rod? So, um, so sometimes it's, it's kind of almost like your, uh, like your shampoo or your lotion. Um, some of the, you know, it, it does like, you know, basically reduce in in potency kind of thing over time. Um, And so while the warranties, that's why the warranties are usually for only a year. um, But we always say that, you know, with the stainless, for example, you know, you could probably two or three years just because of, you know, some of those additional elements that protect it from corrosivity. But it's like over time, I mean, it's, it's potential how you store it. You know, it could, it, it's possible, let's say, that it could be sustained for more than a year, we'll say, if you have it in the perfect, you know, storage situation and all of that stuff. But um, it's kind of like anything that you buy. Um, at some point, the stuff just kind of starts degrading and, might even get sort of rusty inside of the package at times because there's just enough in there that, you know, that can compromise it. No, it makes a lot of sense. And it's only the, the real interesting part is I, I can run it anyway. It doesn't matter wet, dry, hot, cold. And you know what I mean? I don't think about until my students are like, it's sticking, it's sticking. I'm like, what are you talking about? So like, <laughs> like there's actually a science behind this. I promise. That's why we bake them. You know, so just to ask these questions, I think sometimes people are just like, well, I know everything. I just want to know. I mean, you are yeah. ask, you know what I mean? So I'm asking the questions. Why not? No, I think it's a good question because I think we still get those questions and uh, concern that, you know, what's wrong with my with the wire? What's wrong with my, my electrode? And right. it's, it, you know, you, you had it sitting out in 90% humidity for... <laughs> overnight so (laughs) and didn't bake it right so then it's like well you might see some issues so yeah (laughs) yeah right yeah so i love the fact that um, you both brought up that you know that asking questions is okay which is one of the other topics that that tiffany and i you know like to approach is like all the the stupid there's no stupid questions 
you know, mm -hmm. and I think with the with YouTube and with Instagram and curating such um, a perfect world online that it's harder for newbies like, you know, to find to find their their place within the trades. And so, um, you know, we definitely want to make our our site and our interviews very much receptive to all kinds of questions. So thank you so much for being super open about taking ours. Yeah, no, that, yeah, I, I think it's great. Your, your students wanted to know some stuff too. And uh, yeah, I mean, anytime I, like you said, I think anyone who asks questions, I mean, and even the guys, even though you think, you know, if they think that they, you know, it's okay to ask a question. Um, you know, I've learned a lot from them. They've learned a lot from me. So it's a, it's a great thing. So. Yeah. Someone just posted right now. The only stupid question is one not asked. I ask all the questions. I could care less whether I come off stupid or not, because that is your stupidity for not asking it. Yeah. I, I will say that some of the newer engineers that come through um, when they don't ask questions and they make a crazy mistake, um, you're just like, you, you could have prevented that if you would have asked. Cause they're like, well, I thought it was this, this. And you're like, well, if you would just asked, I mean, right. So I love, like you said, I love when someone asks questions at least. And sometimes they ask a question that I'm like, you know what? That's a good question. I don't flip and know. <laughs> like, let's figure it out together. Yes. So, because I don't know everything either. And that's okay. So, someone yeah. asked you, why did Lincoln stop putting cardboard in the rod can? <laughs> oh, good question. I'm not sure, actually. Lincoln, can you been... <laughs> what was that? I just said, Lincoln, can you get back to us on this? <laughs> <laughs> and he's not wrong, the effing engineers. Sometimes, yeah, there's sometimes decisions that aren't always, I'm an engineer, by the way, but um, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm not insulted. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, no, I, I think sometimes people, I love the memes, though, because they're actually pretty accurate when they have the engineer versus the mechanic or the engineer versus the, I don't know, guy on the line or something like that. And it's, um, it's, it's a whole thing. So yeah, so Wyatt, who's on, he's from Lincoln. I don't know if he wants me to tell him that, but he's oh. probably cost for reduction. He's probably right, but I, I wonder if they did all the evaluation. Really, the biggest reason why you'd want to, um, why any changes are made, they don't just do it like out of nowhere. They'll do tests to make sure it doesn't compromise the quality of the product and get shipped okay. So we've had to do, probably do so much testing to make sure that that cardboard being omitted from the package wasn't going to jack up the, you know, the consumable or make it run crappy or anything. So um, I hope that person doesn't think that that has compromised it. Um, if you did, I mean, please feel free to let your your local rep or anyone else kind of know that because I think they try to do those things. If it's like not necessary waste, I think is another part of it. But um, if it felt like it's keeping the stuff more intact and you're feeling like it's rattling too much or whatever that is, um, hey, we might have to put it back, you know? I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. We all have to kind of have those trial by error things too, so. And sometimes it's just a matter of asking that question because if you didn't, someone didn't ask you that question, how would you know whether or not it was a valid thing that they did, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, Good we're time. constantly changing stuff. Yeah. Question. You guys are correct <laughs> on, the, on the comments. We have a lot of rods breaking during shipping. Oh. Uh-oh. That's not good. I cannot see. Well, oh, it, yeah, it just popped up. And then speaking of Lincoln, I was literally just handed a can on Lincoln 7018. Oh. How cool is that? The sun. The sun gave it to him. Oh, how cute. That's so you guys, you, you were telling me that um, you've got, like, little ones coming through Lincoln Electric that you guys give, like, a whole, like, kind of, like, a STEM program kind of deal? Is, is that what... Yeah. You're saying? Yeah. So, yeah. So we have, we actually have a, a few tiers. So we have like some younger uh, groups come through um, that uh, kind of do a road show of like people who might be interested in, you know, uh, different types of uh, engineering or science, but also uh, the trades. And then um, we have uh, also, it's more for high school. Um, 
ish uh, kind of thing where they have an ability to sort of do a quasi co-op where they come and they are able to learn some basic uh, skills. So while I'm assuming you ladies had the same, I was the son my dad never had. So I knew what a Philip. So I knew what a Phillips hat head was, and I knew, you know, I knew all those basic things. There's a lot of people that don't know that, yeah. which I was kind of baffled about, um, but they exist, right? So some of those basics, you know, tools and um, at least that knowledge and understanding basic things of, um, you know, how things work and stuff is also part of that whole program. And it kind of helps them you know, have some what of skills to whatever they want to end up doing. Is it welding? Is it some type of um, other trade? Is it um, something using their hands? Um, they're going to need to know what a Phillips head is and a flathead and they need all those basic things, right? So um, it's kind of cool, like, to know that. But it, when someone told me, like, yeah, these are basic things that they run through the training. And I'm like, like, I knew what that was when I was 10, right? But like you take for granted as all I'm saying is these things that you, right. you know, you think is like commonplace and you're like, yeah, I knew that. In fact, I probably know how to do a lot of things around the house uh, and, and fix them before my husband does, because I was a son my dad never had his, his dad. I think they would have like local people help him, whatever. So I mean, he's an IT guy. So whatever. I mean, I guess we all have our strengths, right? So <laughs> I'm the one cl- I'm the one fixing the dr- garbage disposal uh, while he's like, I don't know why it's not going on. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. so it's, it's a whole thing. So, um, but yeah, so I, it, the program's great. I think having more of that visibility as you guys are talking about having the kids have that, that touch point, have that access and that um, moment where they know it's something that they can maybe do because their family may not, even think it's a thing their kid would be into and it might be something that they really can add value to their lives but really the rest of the world because they're able to like bring a skill that they're naturally good at and they enjoy so yeah yeah that's definitely a cool that's a a cool program yeah is so we're coming close to about an hour i would like to Ah! ask one of our right it goes by so quick um yeah it was really quick it does. It just flies by. Um, but we could talk to you forever. It's super interesting with everything that you do. <laughs> but um, what would be your yeah, best it's... recommendation or nugget of advice to women trying to get into welding or the field or even wanting to pursue like chemistry or engineering? Um, I-, I would just say, you know, continue to just work hard. And as we were saying before, uh, ask the right questions. Um, there's so many uh, examples of not just with women, but um, with young men who uh, are not sure what they want to do. And they can really easily be influenced by people around them uh, negatively or positively. Um, so really kind of listening to your gut and saying, I really enjoy this. Um, and also pursuing stuff that's going to make you feel fulfilled. So maybe a high demand trade job, as we were just saying, this has been ever growing for the last decade plus. Um, and that's what, you know, you want to be in an area that's going to be needed, right? It was needed even in this pandemic, you know, no one was, you know, we all had jobs. Um, that that's a good thing. Um, there are a lot of these trades people had jobs. That's a good thing. Um, so sometimes kind of putting that in perspective, it may not seem like a real glamorous thing for some people, but I think it's pretty glamorous. Um, you can keep an income, you know, (laughs) like it's pretty glamorous that you can like fix things. Um, that you're also part of building this world around us, right? Like you're, um, (laughs) <laughs> what if you could give me a shit talk? What is this? I just, I love some of the comments. I'm sorry. I get distracted when I probably should turn it off. <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> but I, I do think it, it's exciting. And, um, you know, like I've said before, I, I, I encourage everyone to do with what they feel passion for. So just keeping your head, head, you know, in the right direction, keep p- persistence and patience with yourself and people around you. That's huge, right? Because I think we don't do enough of that. So, yeah. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, solid uh, advice. <laughs> and so I think you're, you kind of probably the same. Oh my- with, you know, That's 
you know that's what? Wyatt. <laughs> so um, so I cannot remember his name, but um, he is now working in um, in Brownsville for um, with rockets. He worked with you, so he was um, he's mm -hmm. under Gunas Welder on on our um, IG. Oh. Anyways, he worked with you before. I, I'm gonna have to get back with you on on what his first name is. But he was super stoked that you were going to be on the, on our interview and told me that he worked with you. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Like I, like we were saying, having support from all folks, right? Like, I mean, like I said, I've had the best experience with so many different people. It's been great. I just feel so lucky. I think you guys probably do too. Just to like learn and grow from everyone around you and getting that support. It's like, so awesome. So I appreciate you taking the time because I think these are little touch points that build over time, you know, and give people confidence to continue to pursue their dreams. So that's like so right. Well, thank on you point very, very much for sharing your story with us. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. This is so fun. Um, I uh, would love to help in the future, but you guys will do awesome and good luck with everything. And thank you everyone to uh, um, taking the time to listen to me. I know I can get a little crazy and technical, so. No, we loved the tech. <laughs> okay. Oh, she's rolling a little bit. Looks like she's still. Oh, I think we lost him. Daniel, that is his name. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's so cool. Daniel was the one that reached out and said he worked with you and he was super excited that you were going to be out on our interview. So again, thank oh my you very God. much for everything that you do for us ladies. Oh my gosh. And yeah. for your mentees, it um, doesn't go unnoticed. Well, thank you for, uh, you know, taking the time and you too. I think everything that you, you have done and continue to do is obviously doing some stuff that's amazing so i'm really excited to see more of what you and your and your and your teams uh kind of put together so thank you very much well have a good evening and we'll talk to you later all right talk to you later have a good weekend everyone <laughs> Bye.